And what about energetic effort? What does that mean? Is that like- Well, it's also translated as um, perseverance, diligence, uh, enthusiastic effort, passion, very heroic effort. Like, at a, you know, you, you're really going for what you care about. Not just doing it because you're told to do, you know, doing your chores as a chore is different than well, I grew up in suburbia, so Saturday, and I was the oldest kid, and chores, you know, lawn, leaf raking, stuff like that, weeding. I want to be playing ball and going to the beach with my friends, of course. So chores is different than having a hobby is gardening. Mm. We're just doing the same thing. <laughs> you see? It's, yes. it's, a, what do you call, it's a, a change of, it's a reframe, mm. which has to be genuine. If my parents told me that, it wouldn't have changed my opinion. But, you know, as an adult, people love to garden. It's a, it's a hobby. It's like an art. It's relaxing. Mm. Mm. I like that. I... So then it's like your art. You know, you do as much as you can, you know, not just nine to five to get the paycheck. And if you're yeah. lucky, you find right livelihood or wise vocation. So you get paid to do what you love. Then you do it as much as you can. Okay, well, well, so, like so, form. Okay, so I'm, the path. you do it all the time, not just on Sunday at church. What if it hurts? So, so I, I would say that, all right. So one of the things that I've encountered recently is I'm going through meditation. I'm aware of a pain that is an ancestral pain that has been carried through my lineage and primarily through my mom's lineage. And, mm -hmm. and my first, um, my first response was resentment. I mean, I hate to say it, but it was like, why, why do you have to give me this? It's like, I, well, I can understand. And I it's have painful. a Jewish response. Yeah, why your, me? Yeah, <laughs> Why me? Why this why year? Me? Why? So I, I was Here's a the bit joke like... I made up. Self-inquiry. Who am I? You know, Socrates yeah. said, know thyself. So in self-inquiry contemplation, you look into who am I? What am I? You know, who am I? But the Jewish neurotic cartoon answer is, why me? <laughs> <laughs> so we don't think life is unfair. We, we have the teenage thoughts still, you know, what, nobody understands me. Whatever. It's so human. So how do we You're get talking about we, a deep wound? So how do you what do you want to ask about that? Well, because we're going through the wound. I mean, if you're going through this kind of path, right, you're gonna encounter body pains, physical pain, emotional pain. If you go then, through life. Yeah. And then yeah. and then you go to stay trying to do nothing. Yeah. Stay in bed all day, you're gonna encounter those things. <laughs> exactly. So I got the first response was the why me? And then I had to kind of like make meaning out of it so that it's kind of the reframing, the pulling weeds and yeah. to the mowing the lawn gardening. to loving gardening. So I had to reframe it and I just had to sit with it. So I cleaned off my wipers and thought, well, actually, this is a wonderful opportunity because I can I can heal the generations in back of me and heal the generations Absolutely. ahead of me. That is thought. So me sitting down, meditating, like if I'm doing all of that work, like it's good for everybody before and after, not yeah, just then, then, yeah, then it's okay. <laughs> I can do this. So I've been sitting with a different kind of attitude. Yes. But but what to do? I mean, because sometimes that was it was easy for me to clean off my windshield wiper at that moment, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's not so easy. So we sit in pain. We're lonely. We're sad. We're miserable. We are in pain. So how do we? How do we find the an energetic effort to move past that, especially in days like, you know, my parents just died from COVID. I've literally had someone whose parents both died. Um, their family is now fighting about, so, I mean, how do you, it's so painful. How do we navigate the pain um, in this Bodhisattva way? Well, the first thing to say is a Bodhisattva feels it um, you know, because it's a, it's a human, it's a physical, it's a psychophysical, you know, response. Unlike a psychopath, it doesn't feel pain or know what's wrong or why. That's like a definition of psychopath. So that's not good. Or numbing out. Or even a narcissist who doesn't know there are other people or other people's needs, you know. Mm -hmm. So that all drives in the wrong direction, I think.
question because you are at that level and I'll, I'll give you an example later at that level, CJ, but you said, so you could understand that the ancestor, the women and the, the ones to come, not just your husband, not just your daughter, if you have, you know, are affected by if you do something positive and you work on this wound. So that motivates you to whatever you said, sit through it, go through it, be with it, <clears throat> keep at it. So that's like motivation is part of what brings on, you know, this heroic or enthusiastic effort. Not, you really don't want to do it, but somebody's forcing you to do it. It's mm -hmm. like, maybe there's some hardship involved, but it's worth it. But what to do when you can't find the motivation? There's so many people like, I just can't even find it. Then maybe you have to uh, take a step back and, you know, find some other way. <clears throat> I mean, sometimes you can generate the motivation by doing these kind of exercises or reflections. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know your story. You look like you have some Asian in you, but it might be Asian. <clears throat> My grandparents schlepped all the way here from Eastern Europe and Russia and didn't know English and didn't have money and didn't have pass, uh, papers, passports, whatever, you know, visas. And they came to America seeking a better life and they learned English and they worked for $4 a week in an umbrella factory, uh, practically underground in mm. the Lower East Side of Manhattan. So their kids and grandkids could have a better life, which they hardly even couldn't envision. I'm not going to say so my father could go to graduate school and become an accountant and a professor. They couldn't even envision. Mm -hmm. But they wanted their kids to you know, become Americans and have like an American way of life, not a ghetto way of life in Eastern Europe and prejudice against. So knowing that reminds me to like honor that and be a mensch myself and pay it forward. Mm -hmm. To pay them back. That's how you help them make their mm -hmm. sacrifices, hardships, and no doubt pain and suffering, but sacrifice is meaningful. Mm -hmm. If you just squander your inheritance, whether it's you know money and assets, or it's this kind of inheritance of good family, love and caring, and you know, maybe good genes or good brains, I don't know, good heart. My mm -hmm. father had good heart. My grandfather had good heart. People say, I have a good heart, I hope so you know, then it makes it meaningful back and also forward, not just with your daughter or son, but with theirs. Yeah. And hopefully the world, right? If we're all connected, it's the world, yeah. right? So this right. little work that I'm, I'm doing. Saying. We don't wonder if we're connected to our parents and grandparents or our kids and grandkids. We know we are. But then the bigger connected, not just my grandparents, but great grandparents, you know, two, four, 16, 64, and then a bigger number mm. that helped bring this about. Mm. Buddha said, and I know I'm quoting Buddha all the time, but just to ground this, it's not just my ideas about the previous beneficiaries in time, because time is so relative and we're all connected in some ways. Buddha said, when I was enlightened, meaning Buddha, now he didn't go around telling everybody he was enlightened. He wasn't on an ego trip. But people asked him, you know, what good is it for me if I leave my village and my home and my family and I go off to get enlightened. Buddha said, I'm not saying you should, and I won't ordain as a monk or nun anybody who doesn't have parental permission. I'm not encouraging people to drop out or something. But when I was enlightened, Buddha said, seven previous generations got the merits and benefits and good karma. So not just two or three. So I'm not the math guy. But if you multiply the, the, the two, the six, you know, the 64, you get like a hell of a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Who got the good karma because they help produce this person who brings light and solace and wisdom and love to the world. Then I go back to the yes. question, well, why me? So, so it's like, why, you know, you, you know, you could have been like the CEO of, I mean, you could have had lots of different things. Why, why Lama Surdias? Why, why you? Why me? Know. Why, why, why? <laughs> why? It's a radio station. You should be on. Why, why, W, Y, Y, Y. That would be the best ever. I'm just saying, the question, man. So you There's don't no know. Answers, but why not? You know, who should it be? 
in the Talmud, the Jewish wisdom scripture says, if not you, who? If not now, when? So that resonates. It doesn't mean I'm special or chosen, but why not me? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I got the time. <laughs> I got the time to do it. Be a woman to become president. Yeah. But theoretically, I mean, that's the idea. Anybody can in America become anything, theoretically. Hmm. So similarly, anybody can become like a Buddha or a Jesus or a Lao Tzu or a Confucius. I'm not going to mention Muhammad, but you know, anybody can become a prophet, a saint, a sage, a leader, a, a discoverer of cures, you know, what they call today a scientist, you know, a teacher, somebody who lights the hearts and the lamps of others, anybody. And well, if you think you're not at the level, let's circle back to the important question now of why me and all. That person, I called them an income poop for, I'm not going to back off that, it's an income poop answer. Um, saying you can't, a saint, a bodhisattva is not like up there, like only the Dalai Lama or Jesus or I don't know, whoever you like in the prophets, you know, Aung San Suu Kyi of Burma or Mahatma Gandhi or Archbishop Tutu, I'm just circling around, you know, the world. Um, is somebody who would give their life for others. Who's that unselfish? So you look at me, I look at you, you look at your husband. Who would do that? You'd have to be crazy. But, but if your child is in the sick bed and maybe even has a dread disease, would you or would you not jump into that sick bed if they could go out and play and be healthy? Yeah, absolutely. So who doesn't have that seed called bodhicitta, the heart of the bodhisattva, if mm. there is the right connection, karma connection, mm. or caring or something? That's beyond our minds. We don't even know we have this. Mm -hmm. Like the maternal instinct is not some as a teenager mm -hmm. you knew you had. Mm -hmm. When you become a mother, you find out, guess what? You have it. Some mothers even say, What if I don't love my child? Eh, I'm, all, I'm all screwed up there. Most of them seem to have the maternal instinct and love the children. Yeah, I never thought that the love for anyone could be as great as the love that I have for my kids. That's what people say. Yeah. So it's a miracle and it's beyond the mind and it's beyond our opinion and thoughts. So we all have that seed of bodhicitta that's like the heart of Buddha, the heart of Jesus that would give you life for another. Yeah. But maybe not just for anybody. So like Mother Teresa says, the problem is that we draw the circle too small. Mm. Mm. We can, you know, draw the circle a little bigger and bigger. So we cultivate that with these ways of thinking how others want the same as we do and practice ex breathing together, exchanging yourself and others and seeing through their eyes and develop empathy and compassion, feeling with others rather than being like a narcissist or a, psych a psychopath, you don't feel anything about others. Mm -hmm. Now, if you stick, if you're on a spectrum, that's different, you know, those are pathologies, but most people don't have that. Yeah. And capable of what we were talking about, enacting the purest hearted Jesus heart or Bodhicitta Buddha heart. Yeah. It doesn't mean all the work is done, all the worries are done. But being embodied, being in this world as a human or an animal or anything, as a wise guy said, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Mm. So, how you relate to the pain is vastly up to you. Maybe not entirely, because there's some conditioning evolved, mm -hmm. but very much so. Mm -hmm. So some people persevere through the pain to do their extreme sports or their extreme heroism, and some don't. Mm -hmm. So uh, pain is not suffering. Yeah. And I don't want to bring this up, but even the pain of childbirth, people have told me, you know, is like a joyous experience. I don't want to harp on that. And I know it's very painful. And if men had to do it, we probably wouldn't have babies. <laughs> yeah, I had a C-section, so that so that was my 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 path. But I get it. Yeah, um, the suffering is optional, and it's not entirely. But you know, if you have a headache and you're not overly neurotic about it, it's just a headache. But right. if you start worrying about it and tensing up, and you give yourself migraines, 
that's real suffering, not just pain. Yeah. That's the suffering more from the pain than just the sensation of the pain. Mm. And you're also allowed to take an aspirin or something, you know, mm -hmm. so not to be too puritanical or perfectionistic about it. Mm. I didn't give yourself migraines because you don't take analgesics. Yeah. To pain. Yeah. And even with vaccines, you know, there's Christian scientists that never go to doctors. I don't know what they're doing. There's probably religious groups that have exemptions, you know, like the Native Americans in New Mexico were allowed to take peyote as part of their religious things, even though peyote is illegal. So I don't know how all these different people are dealing with this. These are real, you know, public health questions and ethical questions. And do you force people to do that or not? I don't even know. I haven't researched that. People usually ask me about abortion, capital punishment, trans and homosexuality, you know, things like that. But these other things are also ethical questions. We have to apply our best intelligence and discernment and listening to the other sides, not just two sides, the other sides. Yeah. I mean, what I'm realizing when, when you're describing all of this is in some ways, the greatest opportunity of this time is, is getting really clear with what we believe in, in terms of what we individually believe in and what we believe in as a collective, regardless of what we believe, it's a time for us to go inside and get anchored in, in those things. Like it's, it's whatever your foundation is. We often don't have a lot of time to think about those Our things. Part, right. Yeah, so Just it's so edifying. Long, so busy. And it's a yeah. time of diversity, as you were saying in that street encounter. It's not just diversity of race. It's diversity of beliefs and it's diversity of politics and it's diversity of all kinds of things. Species, you know, the species rights or consideration in the earth. Yeah. I just hope we all survive it all. That's my, I hope we can, it's like, a, this is, a, this is a painful exercise. I just hope we all survive. Well, if the human race doesn't survive, there'll be robotics that capture all of our wisdom and then we'll be gone. <laughs> we went through this in the fifties with nuclear armaments and yeah. these children were hiding under the desk for like, it was like a fire drill about nuclear armaments, hide under the desk. Yeah. But you know, is the world gonna be blown into atomic nuclear waste or not? So you know, you blow up the human race. Who's doing that? Yeah. That's not nature exactly. Yeah. So we did a little course correction, although that's still a threat probably. Yeah. But now we have the environmental threat. And in a way, these uh, viruses and pandemics come out of the environment. I don't know what really the causes are, but like with AIDS and all these things came out of the environment and the jungle. And, you know, how we deal with it, of course, is up to us. So there's yeah. the pain, but how much we suffer from it and do we not survive as a species rather than lose some yeah. percent, you know? And do we perpetuate it, right? We keep we on perpetuating the pain. Is the course correction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is, so you that's make the me... way to bring light into the world rather than darkness and confusion. That's yeah. all. And being less selfish and more aware and, um, connected and uh, you know, empathic or cooperative is probably the heart of the Bodhisattva way. Yeah, thank you so much. I can't tell you how um, grateful I am for your presence in my life, thank how much so I much. absolutely love you and respect you and, you and respect you and what you're doing. Yeah, it's just you just make me so happy. <laughs> I, I, I so what I appreciate most about you is how you're so practical and you're hilarious. I've, I don't think I've met a spiritual person. I've, I've, you're hilarious and you make me so happy that you make my heart happy. So thank you. Thank you so much. I'm hilarious enough that I wrote a children's book. I hope you get it for somebody for post Christmas. Oh, my llama. Oh, oh, so is that in your new book? The Yeti and the Jolly Llama? That's and it's absolutely, it's illustrated by a professional illustrator. It's absolutely beautiful. Let's see, show me some of the pictures. Oh, I love that. Oh, I want to get that book. It's absolutely beautiful. Can I read it as an adult? <laughs> you can get it online. You, if, you, if you ask Kathleen, she'll send you one, but no, it's just oh. absolutely beautiful.
I in love short, it. God, love, the Jolly Lama's loving kindness naturally, without him saying anything, tames the scary, frightening, you know, Shrek like Yeti. And he's revealed as like the Shrek, a prince at heart. <laughs> but you nobody understands him. They're all afraid of him. <laughs> I, I relate to that story. Most people are scared of me and don't and don't like me on afraid of intelligent, like, powerful women, you know? Yeah. Especially men. Yeah. Men are really the weaker sex. <laughs> you get hot water. <laughs> what a sense of my thoughts now. All right. I love you so much. Happy holidays. Best of New Year's. You too. Stay healthy and well. And see you soon, I hope. All right. So on January 5th, you're going to be um, coming to East West Bookstore, which is our Seattle books, our beloved Seattle bookstore, um, on January 5th, coming and talking. So um, any, any virtually, virtually. So go to eastwestbookshop.com and sign up for the event. And that, can people find it on your website too? Yes. Okay, excellent. On my which website, is... www.surya.org. Got, got it. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you all. I love the Pacific Northwest where the green Buddha lives. We love you too. <laughs> www.surya.org. Got, got it. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you all. I love the Pacific Northwest where the green Buddha lives. We love you too. <laughs>